There's no, I don't edit shit, bro. I just film and post. <laughs> It's all good. Um, what were we talking about? I don't know. Hey, welcome back to All Good Things in All Good Time. <laughs> and that's a motherfucking lie. <laughs> oh. Because, yeah, I don't have all good time to wait for all good things. Wait, what were you just I'm fucking talking about? 62 fucking years old already, god damn it. Just talking about Are you kidding some... me? Fuck, well, I've fucking... You remember Noah what we were talking about? about? Second ago? Come on. <laughs> You hold that? You hold that. You won't tell me. Ah, uh, well, he don't want to be. He don't even want his voice in it. It's all good. Is, yes, I, it's all good. See? I, know, I know how that is. CSI, all that shit. But no, yeah, here. Yeah. You ready? Fuck. Uh, I was uh, I was involved in the uh, May sixth coalition. Uh, March on Washington, May sixth, nineteen seventy six, I believe. And me and this fucking guy that I fucking worked with, because I was already abandoned from my fucking mama and everything, left to do whatever. But we drove all the way from upstate Liverpool, Syracuse, New York, to Washington, D.C. to go protest nuclear weapons. The May 6th Coalition March on Washington. And I remember fucking walking across the fucking courtyard of the Washington Monument and all this shit. I'm fucking sitting on the lawn of the Capitol fucking can see guys up in the trees taking pictures of everybody and stuff like that. Me and my buddy are passing a fucking joint looking up on it. So it's like, yeah, they, they know about me already. So, infamous, notorious spud. Dude, I was just, I was just like, oh, wait till I start filming. And then don't say that yet. And then you can't remember what we were talking about a second ago. Uh, what were we talking about? And no, you can't remember? You got no help on that? God dang. All right, so here's what we got to talk about. Okay, because your life story is so fucking gnarly, dude. Uh, I think about it because it's true. And it's probably I one of the most not, compelling stories. I try stories. not to think about it too much. <laughs> no, but like, you know, you think about your friends, dude. But like, seriously, the part yeah, where like your was, brothers used to shit. experiment on you by yeah, giving you Yeah, my older brother up, Rick, yeah. Beating you up after giving you acid. If I didn't take it, yeah, he would like hit me until I fucking screamed and my mouth wow. would open. And then he would drop the sugar cube in and see how I would react. And wow. so I was constantly going to school with black eyes and fat lips oh, and... My God. Going to school just like fucking. I have to do an acid. Should, yeah, should he be in special ed or something? Oh, you know, yeah. but this now we're you know we're talking fucking the early seventies. So yeah. it's like it, back then there was no like oh there's something going on. You know, the most the most that anybody ever thought was that I was being abused at home by my parents, and I was just like nah, oh, not nah, as nah, not you don't even you don't even understand what's happening with this fucking shit. But yeah. Made me very creative. That it made me the MacGyver that I am today. <laughs> I think for sure. So I remember I had a the closet in our in our apartment, in the because there was me and my two brothers, Rick and Randy. Right, me and Randy slept in a queen size bed. Rick had a bed. My mom had hers. One, you know, it's just a normal apartment, right? And because of all the fucking shit that was going on, right, I'm just like fuck. So I actually fucking MacGyvered a fucking fake wall inside the closet that was just big enough for me to fucking sit in between that wall and then I put up that wall with the shirt still hanging and the shoes still sitting right next to the fucking wall. So when my brothers would come home, like, where the fuck is, Sp where's the Jeff? Because back then I was just Jeff. I was, Jafifi, where's Jafifi? Where's fucking Jafifi? Where's that? Where's that? And I'd be like, oh, go Carl in my little spot. I'd be like, yeah. Whoa. Just high enough, yeah. I never they, heard this story. Yeah, because they'd come fucking looking for me and shit like that. Just to beat you up. Just to test out the fucking shit. Like, my brother would be tired of fucking beat me up, call up his friend. You want to come over and beat on Jeff for a while? <laughs> yeah, the fucking Gnarly, Brr, I'm going into my little fucking... Yeah, became very MacGyver with that kind of shit. That was I, upstate New York? Yeah, Syracuse, Liverpool. Gnarly. Nedro. To be like... like, like and your mom... Spilled coffee on you to teach you. A no, lesson. no, 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 no. I spilled oh. the coffee on me. Oh, okay. I was really, that's why I don't drink coffee. Fuck coffee. Coffee's the worst shit in the fucking world. Hot, bitter, fucking nasty ass shit. Why the fuck would anybody drink coffee? Oh, and right? I love So I tried it because my mom drank coffee all the time. She smoked a lot of cigarettes, drank a lot of coffee. Like four packs of cigarettes, three pots of coffee on a weekend, doing crossword puzzles, sitting in her little chair in the fucking apartment. 
And I'm like, well, what the fuck are you drinking? So one time I'm going to grab that fucking cup and I'm going to try that coffee. Two, two and a half years old or something like that. Just burn the shit out of myself because it's hot ass fucking coffee, you know? I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. I had no idea. And so to this day, like even like coffee ice cream or whatever, I can t I can take a bite of it. All right, it's sweet. It's just that. Nah. Coffee. Nah. Not into it. Don't like anything that has any... If it has Guinness beer, has that coffee flavor, those dark coffee flavors that they have, can't even drink that. How no. old were you the last day, which is the story right of itself? Well, how old were you that last day when you left your home after you uh, took it to your Well, brothers? I just, yeah, it, I was, it was, it was like just at my 16th birthday, the mom was just like, so, see ya. <laughs> oh, she bailed, that's right. Yeah, because she was, she was kind of having a bit of a nervous breakdown with everything that's going on. Yeah. I was the youngest of three boys. Yeah. So I was just about to turn 16. My brothers are 18 and 19 at that point. They're nuts. Yeah. Yeah. She she can't control us. She can't fucking afford us. Yeah. We're growing up on fucking welfare as it is and eating the shit out of the house. Yeah. I know if they weren't, I was. Yeah. You know, so it's like I was probably bigger. I was probably as big a problem as anything else. But she was kind of like having nervous breakdown. Boom. She, she transferred with the company she worked with um, from... Syracuse to Long Beach because they had a branch in Long Beach and these folks that, that I know as June and Dewey Clark that I believe were my godparents were living out there so she went out there because they were going to help her out while she was out there I see and she left us to your own devices yeah to okay well and with those great brothers here yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> who had fun experimenting on you and beating yeah, you up yeah they were already having a good old time with that shit Fuck. Just after I turned 16, that's when I fucking, I just like, whoa. me and Randy had it out. Randy was the middle brother, so me and Randy had it out, and I fucking just beat the fucking shit out of that fucking guy. <laughs> I remember that. I remember all the brothers standing over me, and I'm just fucking, he's like, yeah, that's the way. He's always, yeah, Jafifi used to love to call me Jafifi. Yeah, Jafifi, that's the way, Jafifi. Yeah. Your older brothers rooting you on while you beat yeah, up your middle beat brother. Up, that's the way that and I then was you done. On him. So, and I looked at him and I said, "You're next." You're, I told him, "I said you're next." I go, <laughs> I go, "It's not right now." I go, "But you're next." I go and see how he's breathing. I go and between me and you, when I see you again, you won't be breathing. <laughs> okay, so you don't want to see me again. And I'm fucking that was pretty much the last time I had seen you as one of those fuckers. Well, and then you just moved out at 16. I was, I went back to the apartment. I was paying their fucking, I was working full time going to, I was a fucking freshman in fucking high school. I just turned 16. I'm a freshman in high school. I'm going to fucking school full time, right? Fucking school full time. And working right? full time. Coming home. I get it at home fucking 3.30. Fucking walk from the bus stop of the school bus stop to the fucking city bus stop to go from Liverpool, New York into the city of Syracuse to go work at fucking the Poseidon restaurant at 770 James Street Tower. And I would get off of work at two o'clock in the morning. And my buddy Lee Polvakis, his dad would drive me home because they lived in the little townhouse next to the apartment complex that I was living in. So I'd get home at 2.30, three o'clock in the morning. Have to go to school. When? And then go to school the next morning. Get what up time? at six o'clock. Not early. Go to school all day long, get off of school, Go and go work. walk right to the city bus stop. Go, work. go down and fucking go to work. So that I could pay fucking rent yeah. for the apartment we were living in. Because my brothers weren't going to fucking pay rent for the apartment we were living in. Gnarly. Graduated as a junior. As soon as I graduated, I was working actually for a Garrity Lumber Company. We used to, it was kind of a, it was kind of like a prefab company. They used to, you know, put together doors and windows. I worked for their window, or their, uh, roof truss shop so we'd put together roof trusses that go out into the it was cool because you know i'm fucking still a young kid you know like one of my one of my other first jobs besides being in a restaurant was fucking going out and fucking driving in a fucking forklift and shit and picking up lumber bring it into a fucking little sawmill setting the fucking angles for all the lumber and then gang nailing everything together in a big giant press and slapping it all together into fucking shit and then sending it off and 
I was already, you know, because I was out of the restaurant and we were talking one time, it was like October-ish or something, freezing rain starting to come through and we were talking about places it'd be really great to be in. I'm like, yeah, my mom bailed about two and a half years ago to Long Beach, California and the guy that was my foreman was like, yeah, well, what, with her husband or what? I'm like, no, 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 I never knew my dad. They just, you know, she bailed, she was having a, you know, she just wanted, so what's her phone number? I'll give her a call. I'm like, Oh, you fuck her, right? I'm like, at first I was like taking it back, like, oh, you fuck you. What the fuck are you talking about? And then I went home and I'm like, wait a minute, maybe I should give my mom a call. You know, I mean, if I should, she bailed or whatever, you yeah, know, it's been three years or whatever. Let me, let me give her a fucking call. And I'm just like, you know, tell her what was going on. She said, yeah, well, come on out to California and we'll. So that's how I got from New York to California was because mom was like, yeah, come on out. And because wow. I was her baby, I was the baby of the family. Plus, I was the only blonde. I think I was something different from everybody else. Yeah. She had black hair. My dad had black hair, as far as I know. The only picture I saw was a yearbook picture of him in a, uh, from Norton Air Force Base. So he had black hair. My mom had black hair. Rick and Randy, both my brothers, had black hair. I was the only blonde. You know, so that's why I think things were like a little bit different altogether. How long did you live in the in some area other than Mammoth for a while first? Um, a couple of years in Long Beach. Um, I, the first job I had there was at Buffum's department store. I became an associate area manager for uh, small electrics and home appliances impressive. or whatever. Yeah, a very young very age. Impressive. I was like going to work in a fucking suit and shit like that at fucking well, 18, 19, right now. 19 years old, you know, 19 <laughs> years old. Fucking... Now, that was the other thing. It was like, oh, I'd waited so long to be legal to drink in upstate New York or whatever. You know, 18 years old, it's fucking legal. And now I'm like leaving from there to go to California where the drinking age was 21. But I took Amtrak out. So the guys are like, yeah, drink all the way, all the way till there. But as soon as we cross California, you can't drink anymore. That's right. Yeah. So it's I was just like, like I was having a good ass motherfucking time. on. Uh, yeah, like that was a really good way to go out too. It was like, I could have, I could have flown or whatever, but I took I Amtrak. Amtrak was really cool. Went from uh, Syracuse to New York City to uh, Chicago. And then at, in Chicago, like for my trip, I ended up having a Pullman car. So it was kind of like in the daytime, you could like go into this this car and it was like a bench seat and stuff like that. And then at night you could pull the thing and the thing would come down and it was like a bed. Oh. So it was a Pullman car. So like from yes, from Chicago to L.A., I had a Pullman car. Interesting. Oh, it was fucking yeah. It was a full on sleeper. I gotta do that. Oh, I wanna do that with these kids. Yeah, man. with a sleeper. Don't don't just go in like coach or whatever where you can like recline or whatever. Don't get the Pullman car where they the fucking yeah beds and shit. So mine was just a single. They have like bunks and doubles and but and it just had a nice window on the side and the bed had come down. I met really cool people in the club car. <laughs> there were times we'd just go back and sit in my in my in my car and fucking get high, drink, and have a good old time. One time the train got de there was another train got derailed on on our way coming our way. So we got stopped and we were in Kansas, which was a dry state. So they couldn't service any fucking booze. Interesting. And we're like fucking sitting there. We're talking with a couple of guys. I wish I knew some of these guys' names, but I remember, you know, the people that are working there and stuff. And we're like, and all of a sudden it's like, we can see like maybe a half a mile away, there's a little podunk something, gas station or something down there. And one of the guys is like, I bet I can fucking run down to that fucking place and find us some booze and they've got to have a store. And the guy on the train is just like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can, maybe you don't. And they're like, we're like, well, how long are we going to stop? And he's like, oh, I don't know. He goes, I have no idea how long we're going to but if we start going and you're not on the train, we're not, I can't like tell, tell them to stop for you or whatever. And so we kind of went back and forth for about five or 10 minutes or so. And the one guy was just like, fuck it, whoa, <laughs> takes off, I'm like, ah! runs down. Next thing he comes back, he's got like two bottles of TJ Swan. <laughs> nice. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, nice. let's just keep, yeah. TJ Swan, that was some of the fucking shit that was the big time back then. 79. TJ Swan. Is that tequila? What the no, fuck is it's, it's, beer? Uh, it's like a, uh, yeah, like, uh, it's like. The night train, like? like yeah, like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, like, exactly. Like, like, yeah. like uh, Bum's liquor? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 2020? 
I think it's the exactly, other one. Yeah, right? it's exactly. Night Train, right? Exactly right? 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 TJ Swan, Night Train, uh, 2020. I think they're uh, all super in the wine. same. Wine is yeah, they're all in the same alcohol, right? thing. Yeah, they're all in the same thing. It's like, like 20% like wine. Like what they, what, what they finally <laughs> refined into Zima or something. I don't know. Oh, is that what I don't know. Is that the origin story for Zima? I never knew. No, I think TJ... TJ Swan, Tickle Pink, you know, that kind of shit. Boone's Farm, that kind of fucking shit back in the day. Mad Dog 2020. Yeah, yeah Mad Dog 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah TJ that's Swan, that's up, the that's same the shit. That's Jeremiah, what, yeah. That's yeah, what just they like, used to, like, associate with the homeless people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we were able to get a couple of bottles of that because we were homeless on a fucking Amtrak train. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah and it'll awesome. get you drunk. Yeah, it did. That's the shit that gets you. That's why they like it. Yeah. It's affordable. It gets you drunk. Uh, that was my trip to carry. Out. It's good to carry when you're running across LB. the desert. That was my trip to the LBC. Oh, Spud Nick. We should Crazy. take a road trip together. That'd be fun. There's not a lot of the roads out here on Maui. America. No, the United States of America. <laughs> That would be not, not having to get on a plane and fly to the mainland, and that ain't gonna happen. I know. Oh, no? No, no, fuck no. Not with the doors flying off and wheels dropping off and wheels popping and uh, hydraulic fluid. Have you seen all this shit in the oh, movies yeah, the last yeah, three you know days? What, you know what happened? Yeah, since the door, since the door, it's become all the news. Well, it's like, so obviously this shit's been going on for a long time. Yeah, well, here's what we're just going to bring it to light now since the door blew off. Here's what happened. <laughs> they used to assemble these freaking planes all in one place at Boeing in <laughs> Seattle. And then they're like, we're going to save some money. So we're going to assemble them now in Georgia, right, where labor is cheaper, and we're going to make all the parts in all these different places and send them in there to be assembled all together by these separate assembly people, but who are not, like, whereas it was all, they, they made the parts and they assembled it in one place. Right. And, you know, perfectly. And that's what they used to perfectly. do at Boeing, right? And then all of a sudden, everything started. The, the, and, and this has been the story, if you, if you watched, like, business news, uh, like I used to do, and if you still, it's the same story now as it was 15 years ago, but the story was, oh shit, yeah, uh, our our standards aren't what they should be or used to be, and parts don't always fit perfectly together, and you, know, you hear this shit, yeah, it's right. kind of unnerving, but yeah, at least planes mostly don't crash, mostly. I like that. Mostly. <laughs> I've been flying lately, and I'm glad that they haven't been uh, crashing. I didn't think anything of it, never like, was like examining it, but I worked at uh, in Long Beach. One of my other jobs that I had there was at McDonnell Douglas, and I worked for like their food service company. Like they'd have the little trucks that would drive out to all the different hangars and stuff like that, and have all the different like dude, start for lunch, and everybody line up and be, oh yeah, let me have the ham and pastrami sandwich and that and that drink and this drink and that. And we'd have ice cream or whatever without fro you know the dry ice and stuff like that and drive the trucks around, do all the preparation in the morning, like make the sandwiches and wrap them in the plastic stuff with the heat pad so that they would all stay fucking solid and shit like that. I I ended up like progressing up because I was a little bit more gifted than some of the guys that were working there. Yeah. So I ended up like, I would do all the morning runs of all the coffee, urns of coffee and you know, all the 20 cup coffee things with the donut and the Danish platters and get to go all these different fucking this conference room and that conference room and that conference room and over in through this hangar and through this fucking flight simulator area and through this and through that and it was like I was like this is fucking that was another cool thing I was like this is really fucking cool I'm like cruising around all these fucking big ass motherfucking jets and shit like that and cruising in all these like pretty fucking, I think, top secret fucking places and shit like that. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Oh, bro, like when we went through yeah, the I didn't war. know what the fuck was Like when we went but... through the war room on the USS. Yeah, Lassen. right? That was badass. That had to be top secret shit. Well, Lassen. Oh, yeah, they covered up a bunch of that shit, remember? I'm like, they covered a bunch of those things with cloths. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, when we were in the that one room, it was like all dark and cold. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, they had a couple of their screens were covered with like blankets. Oh, I didn't see. Because he was like, yeah, yeah, he's like, there's there's shit it on. Had these... to be a classified place to be. Yeah, in. yeah, he was <laughs> like, there's shit on these screens that you just can't see. Yeah, yeah. He's in there. We can't turn this off, but there you can't see it. The the one screens that were there, we could see and shit like that. But yeah, that yeah I just ass, love bro. how rebellious Mikey Boone was jumping right. off that Shh. fucking ship. I thought we were. I thought there was like we were all me, him, and Samar were all gonna do, it, and then he all. And then he just took off on his own because we had talked about it, 
Like, yeah, when we get up there, we're gonna we're gonna fucking go and we're gonna find the spot. Uh, he didn't say gonna... one, two, three. He just no, he just fucking. Wah! Yeah, you know how he is. Mikey. <laughs> 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 right in front of the captain coming in on the fucking skiff. I know. I was yeah. I was like, uh, I I pulled up right as he was swimming up. To the <laughs> buoy to swim up. That was awesome. Oh, God. Yeah, they picked him up. Yeah, we're all right. We'll get him. We'll bring him up, boy. We're like, yeah. oh, we're all fucked now. Fucking the captain of the fucking I, destroyer. Yeah, I didn't want to him offend him them necessarily, yeah. you know? Yeah. Captain of the destroyer is picking him up out of the water to bring him on deck. After he jumped <laughs> After he jumped off every deck. guy in the ship's like, oh, I wish I could have done that. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, my dream. Yeah, they'd be going to jail That guy just that. lived my dream. <laughs> yeah, they would have gone to jail for that. For but sure. that would be the smartest thing for them, actually, for fucking to boost morale, and it would help them in the event that there was a situation where guys had to jump ship, they wouldn't be afraid to, right? But just let them have a day where they get to jump off that ship. They they would love that. It would be fun. It would bond them. But also someday, if they ever had to jump ship. It would be like, oh, that's cool. I've already done that a thousand times. That would be the oh, best. They, they do be that. the best morale booster ever. They already do, they already do that. You they think they do let it. them jump off? They the do ship? those drills. Guarantee you, they do those drills. Okay. Uh, I want, they, well, do I mean, them, they, they do them on the subs when the subs would come in. I could see those guys out there all the time, and they're okay. like swimwears. They're definitely doing things that are like water related. Guarantee you. Yeah. They're not going to not practice that. Yeah, I don't know if they practice it, but I, I gotta not, imagine not. those guys wishing they could jump off the bow. That's gotta seem like a good time. Yeah, when they're just <laughs> hanging out and having a rather than when they're you know have to do it. But yeah. Oh my god, that was cool, man. And Buff put put up the uh, the buffet. Who is now my son's boss? I love that. Both yep. you and Buff have been the Hana Canoe Club presidents. Yeah, that's a pretty cool freaking. And that's what boy doesn't like. <laughs> he doesn't like anybody that's ever been a president for the canoe club before. Yeah. Because he wants the place to be his own. That's, Whatever. That's, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. I, I might probably paddle with Kahana this year. Dude, I think I might do that too. Yeah. And you know, I got a good 50s crew you and then or 55, was just 60 telling crew. Me about how special. Oh, no, it was Kirk, I think. Because um, he was telling me about how special they had a second co op built by. Sonny, that's like a lightning. Kids. It's like a lightning co-op. <laughs> yeah, they have. It's like a they have their they have their main one that you know, and then they have one that was built for the for the Keiki. Oh, is that the fast one or no? Well, they have the one that's made for They're the channel. They're both fast. Yeah, they may have the one I'm made sure. for the channel. I'm gonna go take a pee real yeah, quick. Yeah, go. You take a pee. Yeah, and then I'm gonna. Have uh, I'm my... gonna take a QRS TUV. Yeah, and then I need to have a my after that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for hanging out, Spud. I appreciate it. This is good shit. Getting late. I got a cat that's looking for food. <laughs> oh. It adopted me, so I can't wait. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I I look forward to someday being able to have a pet. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what. I didn't plan on it at all. I guess. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. It turned out it was kind of like semi-feral. Oh, gosh darn, gee whiz. Heck. Oh, son of a gun. Oh, no goodness. Woo. Oh. Mm. Ah. No, I'm still recording. This is this uh There's this party continues. I know, I know. I know. But Spud's gonna come back, sit down for a second, and then we'll we'll close this thing out. Or so you gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But his phone's over here, so he gotta come back. He gotta come back to this space. And I got I guess to give him his new zero water. There. Let's put that there. See? Zero water. <laughs> All right, can you see that? Uh, not quite. That's good enough. Woo. <coughs> bro, bro, cuz. Yeah, so let's continue to trash Jerry Clark <laughs> and Paul Brown. For real. 
Yeah. Fuck those guys. You know, my dream Fuck is both to those be, guys. I can't even believe, like, I was just, like I said, so I can't even believe. You, that's for you. Take that oh, home. Okay. Zero water, bro. And look, see that little tester? See this? It's a parts per million tester. You get one, too. What does it tell me? It tells you how many parts. Like my, uh, how much dirt's in the water. It'll tell me my shower water. Oh, I can fill this with my shower water and then test this, or I can hold it in the shower. Put, no, put any water in a glass. Put on and... And then sometimes you got to hit a button or two, but whatever. I like and the then, tester, but I drink bottled water. So you still want to put your bottled water through this because oh. that'll take the little microplastics out. Oh, is that right? Even if it's clean water, it'll get even cleaner, but it'll also at least take out the microplastics. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, and then that's so I've been, I've been wanting to test my. I've been wanting to test the shower water because it's weird because it's like, I when I when I'm in the shower and I'm like taking a shower, I feel like that I'm like. I feel like there's like a something wrong with it. Yeah, it's like it. It doesn't feel like it's clean. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the shower when I used to take my shower at nine nine one back in the day. Interesting. You know, it doesn't feel the same. It's like it almost feels like it's leaving a little fucking bit of a fucking well, slippery kind this. of a slime on me. Or I'll something. Tell you this, I don't know what this means or what it indicates, but back at in Lahaina Town, I tested the water back in the day. Uh, before the fire and it was 115 parts per million right. consistently what are parts and, which okay and well and there's a little booklet in there that explains okay. yeah i'll check but, it out no you know, the no, less, i'd love to check the it out the less the better saying about today when i was taking a shower i was like but the fuck, now, why do i not feel clean when i now, take a shower okay now when i test the tap water here at the hotel it's been 455 to 508 parts per million which is pretty high um and then uh and the and the seven time filter, you know how they got those seven time filters, like it filters in seven, seven different ways. It only brought it down to four hundred parts per million from west and so. And then the the filtered fucking drinking fountain down here, that's like oh you know has the numbers Hopefully up there. Hopefully your bottles with it. You know what I mean? You're right. Yeah. Didn't the high change it at all. However, this is really interesting. The fucking Manitowoc ice machines, because if you think about it, all around the world they probably put these things in. The one thing they can't control is the water going yeah, in. Yeah, what's going in. But they control what's coming out. Dude, yeah, that, shit is, that shit is perfect. It's eight parts yeah. per million. It's cleanest yeah. water ever is right. the ice. I was going to say that they can in some ways because they can install different kinds of filters. Well, that's exactly like that. what they do. Yeah. So exactly. that so is the can... cleanest water. So I take the eight parts per million ice. ice. I melt it. And then I put there it through are. there because if it's clean, it makes your, it'll yeah. last a lot longer. You can only get eight gallons of clean water from shitty water. But if it's clean going in, it'll last fucking 20, 30, 40, 50, right. like a ton. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. But out. also for the for your check it out. bottled water, it'll get the plastics out. And that's, you don't want plastic in your body. And we all age. have too much of that shit. Yeah, I was saying, it's in our I've food. Been there, besides my brother's trying to kill me with fucking acid to being hit by a fucking Jeep, to fucking running into a tree at over 60 miles an hour on my fucking skis, to fucking falling through the you fucking... You pulled a Sonny Bono? Yeah, to, to, pulling, <laughs> to falling through the fucking middle of a fucking lake, convict lake, on ice skates, you know, while it was frozen, and falling through the fucking so ice. You play and hockey, I, right? Yeah, 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 I played hockey, and so we were, you know, and I'm out fucking skating around, looking at the ice, going, oh, look at these cracks of, like, windows and stuff, and I look up, and I'm, like, right at the edge, and I was just, like, boom, through the fucking middle... We were usually pretty prepared for it, you know, like we always had ropes with us and clothes and this and that, but of course I was always the one that fucking brought the ropes and the, the clothes and was ready for somebody else to fall through the fucking ice and I'm going to go and fucking save your ass because I know what to fucking do and of course I was forced to fucking claw my way through the fucking ice until I was fucking passed out pretty oh much. Oh my God, yeah, gnarly. Like pretty much gone, should have been dead. You know, like I said, I mean, there's been been several times through my life, and now a firestorm Shit. fucking didn't kill me, and now, fuck, my, I'm going to worry about microplastics? No. <laughs> no, you don't have to worry about them, but you don't no. want them no. in your body like, either way. Now, now I want cancer to give it a shot. Obviously, that's my next thing. Give it a shot. Go ahead. Go for it. Go for it. Whatever. Fuck you. Fuck you. Firestorm didn't kill me. Fucking Jeeps didn't kill me. Ice didn't kill me. Hidden Look, dreams yeah. didn't kill Look. me. Falling, I fell from a four-story fucking. I walked. I walked the Hotel Wilshire. We we went on these fucking trips down with uh, John's fucking pizza joint. We'd go to these Raider games, right? Nah, you know me. Yeah, I'm a Raider, Raider fan. Yeah, Hello. Oh, you Hello, think? Raider fan. Yeah. So anyway, we're staying at the fucking. <laughs> we're staying at the Wilshire Hotel, 
and we have this one floor that's reserved for everybody from us because I'm down. We have a fucking party bus going down. There's like, you know, 60 of us. So every room's taken up. They reserve one, you know, floor. It's a one-time deal. You know, the trip down, the hotel, the game, the trip back, right? So Saturday night, we're taking the bus down on Saturday. The game's on Sunday, right? And then we're going to come home. But on Saturday, we're on a fucking party bus on the way down to the fucking hotel. Just getting jagged to the fucking bejesus. We're on the 26th floor of the fucking Wilshire Hotel. And I fucking find that my fucking window opens up all the way. Oh, no. And the fucking screen is not there. And we just happen to be on the floor that has, uh, like, one of those little fucking little, like, ledges that goes around the whole motherfucking building. Oh, God. You know? Uh, 26 fucking floors up. So I walk all the way around oh God. the building, fucking knocking on people's fucking windows. Oh, God. And they don't open up the window and see me out on the thing. And I'm like, ah! Oh, I'm fucking like jacked off my ass oh, my walking God. on a ledge this fucking wide. Oh, and I walked around the entire fucking hotel. Oh, my God. The entire fucking hotel oh, back to my fucking window and walked back into my window. You are lucky to be alive. Yeah. I mean, oh. And so it's like, and, and the firestorm didn't take me out. So, yeah, microplastics? Fuck you, microplastics. <laughs> well, take that zero water anyway. I will. Clean your water. I will, because I want to check out the water I'm well, showering yeah, it's in. It's fun, dude. Oh, I want to check out the water I'm showering you're in. You're going to want to check it, all the water everywhere you go eventually. Yeah. I don't care about that. I just want to see what's going on with the water well, I'm showering in. The water you're it, drinking. It makes me feel funky. Right. It makes me feel, feel funky. And it's not James Brown funky. No. It's not the right kind of funky. No. Funny when I wake my son up in the morning, I put on James Brown uh, videos. I feel good. No, no, no. Get on up. I said, get oh, on up. I said, get on up. I said, sex machine. <laughs> it's a sex machine. Hey, I'm a a, get on up. Said, you watch uh, watch uh, Tony Beats on Gold Rush, right? And one of his favorite things is uh, all about life because he's this Norwegian guy. He's all, in the morning, you got to get the fuck up. Get the fuck going and get the fucking shit done. <laughs> That's what you have to do every day. Get the fuck up, get the fuck going, and get the shit fucking done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, gold. All right, so can I get gold out of mind. here okay? Yeah. Or uh, oh, yeah. do I need I'll something help, yeah. to... Yeah, yeah, no, I'll help you yeah. Okay. All right, let's get out of here. All right. Yeah, because I got to go. Uh, yeah, I got yeah. a dog that's going to... I got a cat that's going to yes, be like a dog yes. when I get home. All right. Aloha. Yeah.